What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. It's the final days of the Chrissy D residency. This is it, baby. Unless we decide to do more. But for right now, I think this is going to be it. Um, I love this dude so much. It's so fun goofing with my boy Chrissy D while he's here. Uh, Chrissy Chaos out in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm on the road, you guys. I'm excited to be back out on the road. Go to andrewsantino.com for them tickets. I think Salt Lake City is sold out. I think... Addison in Texas might be sold out. Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey devil. I'm coming out there to Atlantic City. Also, Madison, Wisconsin, Boston. We're going to put Houston up soon. Um, and I've got uh, a few more other dates that we're poking around with. But go to andrewsantino.com to find out more about them tickets. If you're looking for merch, look down below in the YouTube bar or go to andrewsantinostore.com. Uh, the Patreon is Whiskey Ginger Podcast. Uh, Patreon.com slash Whiskey Ginger Podcast. Sorry. Uh, and that's where we do the solo episodes live. We also do Zooms with the top tier and all sorts of fun stuff over there. But if you're going to come see me on the road, go to andrewsantino.com to get them tickets. Enough rambling from me, man. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75. Ginger's all hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Yeah! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it today because this is his last day on the residency. Maybe Chrissy D. Stefano. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Hey, welcome back, baby. It's potentially my last day on the residency, but I am here Maybe. for the next couple of months. If you wanna, if because I know you Maybe got. Maybe we'll do some more. Because I know you got the big hitters coming up. So yeah, I'll do. I'll do them if there's a little if there's a little ever a little dip. A little dip Chrissy's, to do? Chrissy's here till May 24th. It's my mother's birthday, which you said she also has red hair. So you Ew. guys are gonna hook up. Your mother has red hair? Yeah. Could you imagine if I became your stepdad? What a fun party. Fun Spe party. Speaking of redheads, let's talk about what's going on. What the what's going on over at Barstool Sports? Them them dumping all over Rappaport. I didn't did you see this stuff online? Oh, I kind of saw because to be honest with you. I think he sued them. I initially thought, I initially thought that um, uh, it was all a joke, like a bit like That's with Dave Portney and Rappaport, because I'm like, oh, it's just like cool guy, whatever. But then when I saw Dave Portney post the deposition of from like the like that he had to do for his lawyers, I was like, oh yeah. shit, this is for real. Like but it he still for real might suit be him. a bit. A, a piece of me thinks it might be a bit because Kevin Durant thing with like that's him another calling thing. Kevin Durant a bitch and all that stuff. I was like, that that's not. Is there's that, no way that's real? Because then he posted the video of them having fun, and I got to be honest with you, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit like, it's like when guys talk tough. I get it. The minute you and I'm not even taking sides with this because I don't know, but the minute you post your private messages yeah. on Instagram, it's such a bitch move. It's so lame. Like, like I was on lame. Chet Hank's side in the beginning when he wanted to fight you. Yeah. And then when and then I was like, yes, like beat Santino. <laughs> and then when Chet post Chet Hanks posted the DMs, I was like, ugh. Dude, yeah. you, you acted you're acting like Tom Hanks now. It was so bad. Don't do that, dude. It was so bad. Beep. It was so sad, dude. It was so weird. It was also yeah. very weird. When people talk shit on online to you, yeah. you're like, this is so that's like the saddest thing you could ever it's do. It's like it's like guy, like, cause here's the that's thing. That's why I didn't believe it though. With him and Durant, it right. was like um right. it was like the stuff he was saying, I was like, he would never say that shit to his face. Yeah. So they can't be real. Like a piece of me was like, there's no way. But that that's real. But in the in the video that Rappaport uh, uh, posted with with his guy Dean, that they like they invited him to a game. Durant and it felt so, acted. But the yeah. whole thing he was like, and Mike was mad. His flow, his for, his feet are supposed to be on the floor, getting splinters. That was acted. But what would I know? But then the whole premise to me seems acted. Because if it was real, it would be a little bit more quiet. That's right. my point. Like that's you, the thing. When something is an obvious, like when we make fun of Theo. Or and they come after me and Bobby and all yeah. that. It's so obviously a bit. Sure. But this is obviously a bit the acting part. So then, what part of it am I supposed to think is real? Yes, yeah, see that's because what... the deposition looked phony too. Yes, yeah, see it, it. Well, no, see the no lawyer would bow down in a depo deposition and go right. I understand what you're saying. They don't do that. 
You ever they, seen deposition tapes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're dicks. Well, you know what we could do is I could, you know, because I know, you know, being in New York, I know the, some of the other guys at bars do well. Like somebody's right hand in it. I could get some text. I can text and find out and see if it is true. And then I'll post that on my Instagram. I'll post that. I'll post private messages. And that'll be, and that'll be only on Christy, K- Christy Chaos. Christy Chaos. <laughs> Patreon.com says Christy Chaos. Yeah, let's call it. What's his name? Who are we going to call? call KFC? Yeah, let's call KFC. Oh, yeah. I love KFC. Yeah. What's his last name? Clancy. Right? Clancy. Kevin fucking Clancy. Kevin Clancy. Let yeah. me see. Let's see what he has to he say. He initially spelled it with a K, but he had to change it to a C. Because it was K. Because middle name's, yeah, his middle name's Kyle. Kevin Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Clancy. Kevin Kyle Clancy. Why did he have to change it then? Is there any history there? He's not going to answer. What time no. is it? He's probably working. Because he didn't want to be working. like, he didn't want to sound like like he was being like, you know, a dick. Like K, K, K. Like, you know, like when you text okay, like K, okay, K, okay, K, okay. okay. He didn't yeah. want to be like, like he's being, you know, that makes standoffish. Sense. He's not going to answer. K, K, K. Well, he's probably, he's probably at a rally. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? So I'm going to give you a note. You're on note. You're on notice right now that you're on the podcast with me and, uh, and Chris Stefano. Say hi to Chrissy D. What's up, Chrissy? How you doing, baby? What's up, KFC? Miss you, baby. Love you, baby. We're, dude, we're deep. We're deep in the throes of this right now. I want to know what's going on over there. Is this a bit? Is this a bit? The rap thing, or is this real? No, it's very real. Fuck that guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but here's here's why we thought it was a bit. Let's let me explain. Because the footage of him at the basketball game. Uh, with the ki- with his buddy Dean, it looked fake and acted. We both agreed, and yes. it was like a bit. And then afterwards, I was like, "Well, there's got to be a bit. He's not going to front on Kevin Durant." And then the DMs, I was like, "Is this a bit?" I couldn't tell. And then the even the deposition film, I was like, "Is this them fucking no, with us?" Well, okay, I-, I can speak to to Barstool's involvement. Like that was I I would I I had to go through a deposition too, and it wasn't like fireworks like like funny with Dave. Kevin did you Dave wear was? KFC did you wear a suit to the deposition I know you didn't oh. you Bronx trash you trash bag from the Bronx you know what he wore he wore a windbreak he wore a windbreaker yeah, and did. a wife beater he, dude he's from City <laughs> Island it's the most white trash <laughs> fucking place in New York City Chris I got out my divorce suit you know you know oh, the oh divorce yeah suit. brought no, out the divorce suit. I got a suit he's got one of the best divorce suits in the game does it still fit not, not after quarantine. Not after I'm going to need to borrow it soon. My girl caught me DMing again. Yeah, you, need, you, you might need to give it over to Chrissy D. Yeah. But although, could you imagine his suit on you? You'd rip right through it. It'd I'd be rip fat right guy it. little coat. Yeah. Yours? Those hips trying to get my little coat. This guy, he's grown. What, what are you, what are you, what's your waist now? 40? 36 now. He's 36. No, you he's 36. I'm no honestly. Way you're 36. I'm 36. Wait. You're at least 40. <laughs> you, wait, wait. Kev, you think I'm getting fatter? Uh, I would, I would just assume so. See, like, no, I, like, I've been exercising, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so, Kev, this is, and it was like, yeah. I, even I was, I went into it. I was kind of nervous. I was like, don't fuck up. I don't want to get Barstool in trouble. Right. And then, like, ten minutes in, I was like, oh my god, these guys are fucking morons. So the fact that they just couldn't even understand a simple like timeline of events with Dave was very true. That was very real. This, the, the Durant thing. I know that they used to be friends because they did that. They did do that video together, and then even after those DMs went out there, if you look at Durant's Twitter, he sent out a tweet being like, "I talk like this all the time with Rappaport. I don't know like why he's upset all of a sudden." But this is what Rappaport does, man. He, he yeah, has, he's the king of fucking trash talk. And then as soon as something gets real, he literally lawyers up or he posts those DMs, clearly being like, "Look how mean Kevin Durant is to me. Like, fuck off, dude. One time, just reply. One time." Back up your tough talk and actually like be funny and have a clever retort, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. I hate that guy. He's such a scumbag. He is such a fucking rat broad hack. Like, just go back to acting, dude. The internet is not for you. You're not smart enough. You're not funny enough. You're not clever enough. You can't keep up. Just go back to Hollywood. You're an embarrassment to New York. Boom! Clip it! Clip it! <laughs> Clip it! <laughs> Yo, so he, so, so I, because we were both going back and forth this morning when I was watching, I was like, I wonder if this is, I wonder if this is them fucking with us, because this could the be a great, it could I be actually, great if you guys are fucking with us. If Durant was, like, because they had been friends, yeah, and because they both, like, I, I did think there was a chance that this was a work. The reason I knew it wasn't was because of the shit that Durant was saying. Because he would never be like, you suck that guy's dick, you come guzzling cunt. Like, the, the, the language is just way too much. Dude, and how about this, K- KFC, too? I mean, the way, like, Durant calling him a cum guzzling pasty fuck, could you imagine if Rappaport called him a fucking cum guzzling dark fuck or something like that? His life would be over! What'd he say, though? He said, meet me outside. He said, meet me outside of where he, whatever, wherever he was. He I said, give me your address. Twice he said, he said, meet me outside on West Side. 
17th. He said, meet me outside of catch. He was like, come fight. Catch. I kinda, I'm kinda it is fun to fight outside of catch because it's trendy. <laughs> a lot of hot yeah. chicks coming in and out of catch watching yeah. you scrap up. Durant's lanky ass just throwing hands with fucking fat old rap court. Well, let's be real. Let's be real. Rap's lower to the ground. Durant's got the reach. But Durant's pretty thin. He's probably, what, a buck seventy, maybe? But you can't hurt those guys because he's all bones. Dude, yeah, Rap he's he's a skinny he's guy. You think you think Rap's low to the ground? He tackles them, and they do. What happens in this fight? Uh, Rap pours a, a tub of sour cream, dude. He's not <laughs> winning any fight. Portnoy even listen when when shit went down with him. Portnoy, who is on the record a million times saying, "I don't fight. I, I do all my I do all my talking. I never get in the ring. I'm never gonna fight you." He he wired two hundred fifty thousand dollars and said, "Like we can fight in our you know our amateur boxing thing, rough and rowdy." And even he was like, come fight me. Because he knew that never in a million years would Rappaport agree to it. See, this and would be good Portnoy promo. Like, this yeah. would be good I mean, promo. You guys should set up a fight between Rap and Portnoy, 100%. And by the way, KFC. so much fucking money, but Rap wouldn't do it. So KFC, I got to be honest with you. After talking this out with you, I'm now even more convinced that it's a bit. I don't believe a word you're saying. It's oh, a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit. bit. Portney's no. paying KFC to make I, it the bit. I, I, I <laughs> Chris, Yo. go look at the things that Rappaport said about me in my life. There's no fucking way. Oh, he came at you. I didn't know he came he at came, you. Wait, hold on. He came at my baby? If he came at my baby, then that, that now I'm involved. Now Chris is involved. Oh, he, th this is how it all started. He he was arguing with like somebody, because he's a fucking thin-skinned pussy. He's arguing on the internet. And he basically <laughs> made fun of our entire fan base. He was like, if, you, if you're down with Barstool and you call yourself a stoolie, you, you're a fucking loser and you've lost at life. So Dave was like, oh, uh, you're fired, dude. You can't, like, insult our entire fan base. Like, what the fuck are you doing? So I was just defending our fans. And and then he came. He went so low at me, man. We were always cool. Like, I had never had any problems with him. We did our podcast together. We did our appearances together. Next thing you know, he's talking about my ex-wife and my kids. And I was like, Whoa. damn, Hold yikes. the fucking phone, dude. Yikes. A fucking asshole. How did he isolate? How many Barstool fans are there in the tens of millions? Like, how would you isolate that many people out of... Why would you do that? I don't know. See, that's why I think... That's why me and Chrissy were thinking it's a bit, because I'm like, this seems so uh, uh, a suicide bomb mission. Like, yes. what is he doing? I don't under, I don't get it. it yeah. doesn't, that's there, why I'm saying he, he can't... He's not made for the internet, dude. He does not yeah, dude. know how this shit works anymore. Because we haven't, we haven't done any business with him in, in forever now. Like, his podcast is no longer on our network. He's never... There would be no... Bit. Yeah, he's got he a big podcast. Bit here. He mm -hmm. just can't fucking... He doesn't know how to... Yeah, Michael. KFC, Rappaport still has his podcast, though, right? It's just not on your network. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just another podcast. Oh, else got it. Here. All right. Dude, I didn't know that this was... Well, let me say this. Chrissy and I both will put up a hundred grand a piece to fund the fight. We're going to fund the fight, so let it be known. We'll put yeah. up hundred k a piece if this yeah. fight happens. Yeah. We want to commentate, though. We want ringside commentators. 100% we're going to commentate, yeah. And, and Andrew S., Chrissy D. and Andrew S. want to be the commentators on the sidelines calling the shots of the Rappaport Portnoy fight. You heard it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're putting up our money. Let's fellas, go. Fellas, listen, it's, it's, it's very flattering. I'm just saying, have you seen the tax bracket that Portnoy's playing in these days? Yeah, no, no, no. But uh, no, we're doing that for we're doing that for Rappaport. You guys said he was broke. We're just trying to help Wait, out. We're the trying whole to help thing. out. Yeah. We're trying to kick in. Oh. All right, so now you're going to fund my arch enemy now? Yeah, how about, yeah. Sons of bitches. I'm going to put up two and a half Bitcoin. Chrissy's got two and a half Bitcoin on it. I have 16 Ethereum. Let's go! go! All right, dude, we love you. We were just checking in to say what's up. We wanted to know if it was a bit doodles or if you guys are being real, but we, it seems like it's real. Real deal, Holyfield. Thanks for the call, boys. All right, All right baby. Love. Good to talk, talk to you, soon. Kevin. Bye. Bye. He's wow. the best. Wow. Wow. So he did. So he's. I thought this whole thing was kind of in our face. It feels like pie is on our face, but I guess not. I guess not. No, because because I, you know, KFC, I know him well. I I, I, I was kidding about like, oh, it's just a bit. He really like, I could tell like, because yeah, KFC, he's, mad, he's yeah. such a nice guy. Like, yeah. I've never heard him talk like that. Like, he, he really must be like fucking Upset. vitriol for Rappaport. Yeah. Because he doesn't I, talk like that. Well, I've only known. I, so this is yeah. what's funny. I know, I know him just a little bit. Kevin and I know each other just a little bit. And I know Rappaport very little bit, too. Same thing. Like, I probably know these guys the same. So that's why I thought it was a bit. Because I couldn't tell who was messing with me. Yeah, no, no, no. no. He Because rap, I don't really know. <clears throat> really? I thought, like, L.A. comedy, like, he... Isn't he's he a comedy store own, guy? 
No, no, no. I wasn't sure. No. He's kind of his own thing. He yeah. floats. He does shows. I've been on shows with him before. Right, right. Uh, we've always been fine together, you know? Like, but we don't, I don't know him. You don't you know, know him I mean? well, yeah. But we know each other. Right. You know that vibe? That's the thing that I think people don't understand about people in the comedy world is like, we know a lot of people, but we only know a few people. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, we're friends in real life. Right. But there's guys that I am buddies with in comedy that I just know, but I don't really know much yeah, about. Yeah, like it's one of those things. Like if somebody was like, "Oh, can you get you know Andrew Santino? Can like you? I, I want an Andrew Santino video for my friend's birthday." I'd be like, "Yeah, I know Andrew well enough." But like yeah. some other people, I'm like, just because I did their podcast once or twice, I'm not going to ask them for a favor. I don't sure. know them like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a working relationship. Like you and I are friends, and you know, in the uh, real world, in the real world, like I I wouldn't ask. But but I don't think people understand. Like I don't know if you get that from your friends, but I guess I mean especially doing podcasts with Sal Volcano, that the Hey Babe thing Sal and I do. I would say weekly somebody texts me is like, Hey, can you can somebody send a video for my kid? Can can you get Sal to send a video? It's like no, I'm not doing that. Like of course not. Sal and I are like family, but it's like you have to understand how I incredibly wild of an ass that is for me yeah. to ask someone. And I know he'd do it, just like I know he, you do he it. He would do it in a heartbeat. And I know too. you do it in a heartbeat, Same, but it's just like. It's such an uncomfortable thing to ask someone. It puts you out. It puts me out because, because now I'm fucked. Yep. Now it's like either I ask Sal and I know Sal will do it and or a guy like you would do it. But then it's still a little like I got to do this. And if I and I don't want to ask because I don't want people to waste their time with that. But then if I don't if I don't respond to the friend, then I'm fucked with them. So 100%. It's the, a lose-lose. The immediate – so it's like I don't think people ever really think that no. far ahead where it's like – uh, think about the position you're putting people in when you ask them to do something like that. Uh, Neil Brennan calls it. This is the best phrase I've ever heard. It's someone else asking you to do their dishes. That's what it is. 100%. That's what it it's is. It's just like, why am I doing your labor? I don't, that's not, I, you know, that, like, it's not that big of a deal, right? right? Doing the dishes is not a big of a deal, but why do I have to do your dishes? It's just like people want you to do their work for them and they don't want to, they don't want to feel guilty about you doing their work because you're like, it's a small favor and you're like, yeah, but yeah. I, I don't want to do your fucking dishes. Yeah, I don't want to do... Dude, should we... I don't we, want to do your dishes. Should we turn Neil Brennan into an NFT and sell him? Should we mint him? How and do we... How, uh, we Okay, guys, tell us how to mint Neil Brennan and make him an NFT. Uh, What's the meme that goes below Neil Brennan? Fucking pigeon face. <laughs> 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 and it would be him super it would be a holographic <laughs> card it would hit it would change from a new york pigeon to him yeah. that's perfect shout out neil brennan mint it i love neil brennan neil Bre I, one of my good guy uh, him kevin and I had, brennan you know kevin brennan his brother it's funny because neil and i know each other well yeah. we we become very close like he's a i would consider him a friend no a neil's friend. a good dude a good friend like we talk all, uh, like uh every few days and I've never met his brother. I don't know his brother. Yeah. I know who he is. Yeah. I know all that stuff about him. But to me, he's this hes this uh, 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 spy versus spy version of Neil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He's just the, the other version of the right. Brennan brother relationship that I know nothing about. Right. And I know they circle each other, hating oh, each Kevin other. Oh, Kevin is so angry. Tenaciously. Dude, yeah. dude it's so funny. I well, think... one of them is violently successful. <laughs> yeah. And, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, Kevin created the... Uh, Kevin the, created... What, what was it? What show Kevin was created it? Key and Peele. He did Key and Peele. Kevin Brennan created Key and Peele. Wow. Yep. Yep. He, and he wrote with Peel or, or Key? Key. He, Kevin Brennan created, uh, yeah, Kevin Kevin Brennan created Key and Peel. Yeah. And then Kevin Brennan did a thing called a big, very famous Netflix special called Five Mics, where he had he did comedy and then he had a mic for every nationality that wasn't represented enough in Netflix. So smart. that very famous. That's really smart. Guys, yeah. check out his new special. Five Mics. But it's spelled M M I K E S. Yes. Like because, five guys named Mike. Five guy like Five Guys Burger, but it's Five Mics. Yeah, and all different mics representing different nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> Five guys named Mike from all different parts of the world? From all different parts of the world, they Mike. And it's yeah, a genius the, idea. That's a great idea. And then Neil, yeah, Neil s sleeps on the train in New York City. Does he still sleep on the train? Yeah, that's why when you said, he oh, takes I, the L he back said and you forth. text with Neil. I was like, I didn't know Neil had a phone. Well, he's got a cricket. Ben oh. has a cricket wire. Neil okay. has a cricket wireless phone that I think will come. It'll, it, he'll get like a month yeah. of service. Yeah. And then it'll go away for a while, right. and then a month again of service. That's what it and is. And whatever the city pays for, they do that program. You know, they yeah. have the Obama phones, the Obama phones. Oh, the Obama phones. You know that, and oh. you know what those are queued up with. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, freaking. Mm -hmm. They're fueled by liberal tears. When you cry into the phone, you get <laughs> yeah. that's how you fill the battery up. Yeah, yeah, it comes with a free thing of Medicaid. <laughs> 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 yeah, my girl's got the Obama phone. Dude, I had no idea this beef was real on that. And also Kevin and, and also Kevin Durant, let's be real here. I don't know if he would win in a fight against Rappaport only because 
he's so tall and lanky, but he doesn't have any thick. The, the thing thick is, guys, thick guys are good at fighting. That's the thing. The thing is with a guy like Kevin Durant. If he hits you with one of his bones, same thing like a Tayshawn Prince, if he hits you with one of his bones, it's just boom. he can knock, he'll knock you out, he'll split open an eye, yeah. he'll fucking, ki he'll kill you. Because this is sharp. That's sharp, that'll hit you yeah. hard. Bone is sharp. You know, that'll hit you hard. If he hits you one of those, but if he swings and misses, and then if, if Michael Rapport gets the, the weight of his ass behind any, of a, 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 any type of punch, hits him in the chin, hits yeah. him, he can either explode an organ in Durant's body or he might knock his head clean off, clean off. because he's so thin. But the pro, it, it's kind of like if Durant hits you with those bones, though, yeah. it's, I'm telling you, it'd be hard to beat up Kevin Durant. It'd be very hard. Because how do you even reach his head? You'd have to go airborne. But that's what I said. Look, I, I, don't, I think Durant probably would take him, but I also think... <laughs> But I also think low to the ground, it's always good because you can run and tackle him, and that's how you get the, the height yeah, because, differential. Yeah, yeah, if he gets if he gets Kevin Durant down, yeah, get him low, just smash his bones, hit, hit those big tall tree legs, and you're yeah, up. Yeah, that's what Couple it is. Of paper trees, and you're done. The tarantula. I used to remember fights in high school when you watch kids fighting. There was always like. A couple of kids that were so good at fighting that you never, you would have been like, yeah. God, is that that guy's that good, huh? Right, right. I saw two guys fight in the forest over one girl. In the forest? Yeah, they, they had like a, there was like a forest right by the school, and it was right. called the Secret Garden, and people would meet there to do drugs and to fight or to yeah, or a finger a pee, and yeah. uh, these two kids went because they were both dating the same girl, I guess, or some situation like that, right? And um, it was cold, dude. It was freezing. It was cold. It had to be no November or something. Yeah, like that. it was not. It was cold outside. Yeah. So people were like in jackets watching this fight outside, yeah. you know. And all I remember is thinking, it's a pretty even matchup. But right. The kid who I thought had had was gonna for sure take him, he got smacked around pretty good. Yeah. I was blown away. Yeah, dude. Because the other guy just had better skill. He was good at low. And the and you know what the tough thing to watch was. The one kid had a lot of acne, like tons of, what is it called, cystic, where it's like on top Ooh, of each other, you know? Those suck. Dude, yeah, like I had acne in high school, and then I see guys like this, and I go, I'm good. Dude, you, he looked like he had the bubonic plague. He had boils right. on his face. Before they smooth out asphalt, you know, before the truck rolls yes. over it, when it's, when it's still yeah. fresh, that's yeah. what it always looked like. It looked, looked like. like the crust, like on pizza crust, when it has that bubble. Exactly. That's what it looked like. Right. All, it exactly. looked like a pizza crust face. Right out of the brick oven. Yeah, that's what it is. And I got to tell you, dude, when he would punch him, and boom, you'd see you'd see him hit the acne, and he'd get red, and so I was like, oh, oh that hurts. smart. Imagine smart. one of them it's probably a good defense mechanism. One of those pops, and it gets on your hand or in your mouth. Ah, You'd be like, Bleh! right in your eye. Start to vomit, dude. We had a fight, uh, fight place too in our high school. It was like in between two train stations, the E train and Jamaica Sen Union Turnpike uh, train station. Um, I went to Archbishop Malloy High School right off the Jackie Robinson Parkway, and um, and it was fun. I never never forget this kid who was a bruiser, Frank, big Frank. Forgot his fucking last name, but huge white guy. And then he wanted to fight this kid. His name was Timothy. He was a black kid. His <laughs> I swear to God, he was a little black kid. His name was Timothy, but he would go by Taekwon. I swear to God, he was sure. like, call me Taekwon. But like, Taekwon. no, but it says, like, I remember our the biology. says Timothy. Our biology teacher would say, you know, um, uh, dude, you know what our biology teacher used to do? Shout out Mr. DeMarco. We used to call him Booger DeMarco. He <laughs> <laughs> Booger D. <laughs> Booger D. He would be such a dick. He was a good teacher, but he would, in, this was, again, in the late 90s, he would, you would take a test, and then he would hand out the test based off the best grades. So if you got a hundred, the hop grade would go for you would get oh, your test for and then the last one you would he would you would know that you just got the lowest grade in the class and he would go he would like turn the paper down and give it to you like that. Like he would which That's is like funny. so illegal now you can't shame a student like that. But his mindset was I'm gonna shame you So you do better. Right. Right. So, or or you become a more violent version of yourself already. Right. Either way, you're creating a life. A life. And, but if everybody passed, if everybody passed the test, he would just give them out no order. But if there were failures, he would do it great order. Did you ever get yourself an F? I don't even remember, dude. There's so but many. Ta but, ta but Taekwon did. But, ta but so what Taekwon did, so Taekwon. Oh, is it Taekwon or Taekwon? I think it was Taekwon. His name was Timothy, though. His full name what was Timothy. What was his Timoth last name, Doe? I'm, I'm, bl I'm blanking on his last name. Taekwon Doe. Timothy McVeigh. Is Timothy that, McVeigh? What did he? Yeah, Timothy McVeigh. I think he invented Velcro. Yes, that yeah. that was him then. I went to school with with a guy with a guy who they called the Cannibal Cop. That's a true story. You could Google the Cannibal Cop. He was in my homeroom, <laughs> and then Timothy McVeigh was also both in my homeroom. So Taekwon was going to get into a fight with so Big Mike. With Big Frank. Big, Big Frank. Frank. I Big remember. Frank. I just forget his last name. But Big Frank was like a bruiser, like tough kid. Was on yeah. the hockey team, like whatever. And Taekwon, I I don't know what they were actually fighting about, but anyway, we all go down the Union, Union Turnpike. And watch the fight. Yeah. And Frank is is winning, like, it, but not like winning yet. But like, he hit him a couple times. He knocked Taekwon down. And then again, nobody knew Taekwon was just this little black kid. 
Nobody knew that Taekwon knew like full kung fu. He hit Frank, I've never seen this in there, with a spinning leg kick no. to the face, knocked Frank over like David and Goliath, and Frank had to go to the hospital because he got a concussion because his head hit the subway pavement, and Frank was on the floor like having a seizure. We were like, oh shit, nobody had cell phones back then, and we were in a subway terminal. So we had to call like the transit police and be like, yo, this kid just got knocked out. And they were like, by who? And we were like, Take one, <laughs> Timothy. <laughs> Timothy. And Timothy, dude, he hit him with a, a, a like a spinning, like like a Liu Kang from the movies, full leg <laughs> kick, foot to the face, <laughs> and nobody would ever know that this kid had that in him. Right. And it was it was, dude, it was like the sickest fight I've ever seen, and I wish I could remember his fucking last name. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. You guys have talked pretty openly about how I created my website because I'm not a smart person. I'm a stupid man, self-proclaimed idiot, and uh, I created my website using Squarespace. I love it. It's easy. It's convenient. Almost anybody can do it, uh, yourself included. And uh, myself included? What's the difference? Who cares? See? Dumb guy. Uh, Squarespace is incredible, though. If you're looking to uh, publish a blog or a website, trying to sell something, um, if you're doing a podcast and you need a website, or you're looking to sell some merchandise or just uh, put your voice out there and write something cool on the internet. If you're looking to make something uh, on the internet, you want to create a website, Squarespace is the place. Award-winning 24-7 customer support. They have all these beautiful templates that you can use um, that are super easy. Or you can go rogue, go scratch and set it up on your own. Either way, Squarespace is incredible. They make it so simple um, to really put your work on the intranet, whether it's your own artwork or stuff that you are selling. And uh, I use it. It's very easy. For years, it was like, who? how do you make a website? I, I had no idea. Finally, Squarespace lets you know how to make a website, and they can help you if you want the help, which I definitely do. For my listeners, uh, you can go over to squarespace.com slash whiskey and get yourself a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If you're looking to make a site, Squarespace is the place. Go to uh, squarespace.com slash whiskey for that free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a good fight that I still to this day yeah. can't believe that it was real. Yeah. In in <clears throat> So our lunchrooms were divided in high school. Between, it was like... Whites and blacks? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, and then of course, the Latinos were the ones that were serving. Right. So it was, no, but one of the rooms, it was freshman and sophomore, and then it was junior seniors, right? right? Or athletes had separate lunch, because you could, if your schedule was different. Right. And I'll never forget walking into the big, I was a freshman maybe, or maybe I was a sophomore. But This I was is high school or college? High school, high okay. school. But I was walking into the, we didn't have a lunchroom in college. We were okay. grownups by then. I know, true. Yeah. yeah, we were doing drugs. I know, I was the idiot, like my freshman year in college, because I went to Catholic school, I would still like ask if I could go to the bathroom. And they'd be like, you're an adult. Or I would like, <laughs> I would like knock on the door and like wait outside until the teacher came and opened the door, because those were the Catholic school rules. You had to ask to go to the bathroom. And when you came you back to wait. that, you had to knock and wait. So I would do that and just be like looking through the mirror. And like, I never forget, like it was maybe my third day. Yeah. Yeah. Some guy who was like in his mid forties, like who was going back to school, was like, "Hey man, this is college. You don't have to wait. Like you're not a kid anymore." And I was you're like, like, "Okay." Shut up, guy who did this five times already. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "Fuck you, you!" You've already tried this. You've already tried this. I so got. I, like, I couldn't last in Catholic school. I got kicked out. By the way, Moody Bible. Shout out to Moody Bible. Shout out Moody Bible. Kick me out. Moody no redheads. Bible. Moody Bible on Wells kicked me out. That's where I went. Uh, that's where I tried to go to school, and they said, oh, "No, thank you." Yeah. Seriously, the nuns hated me. They hated Wh me. Why? What did I you? I was a little punk. I was a brat. Yeah. That's where this nickname Slugger Santino comes from. Because I'd fight everybody. If they made fun of me for being a ginge, bop, I'd hit him. Bop, bop, bop. If they took something away from me, if they, I was just a, I was just a fighter as a kid. I loved punching people. Yeah. And so uh, the little slugger Santino got. They called my mom and they were like, "He's not uh, Moody Bible material." No, and they got had, kicked out of Moody, Moody and Bible. And you graduated from the Publix. From yeah, the public of, school. of course, of course. I was. My parents were never going to be able to afford uh, right. uh, a private school or a Catholic school anyway. Uh, it was always going to be public. Got it. Like Moody so, Bible was just uh, uh, because uh, I. I was in element. I was in uh, pre-K and elementary. I was going to say so. Either Moody Bible is going to throw you out, or your parents are going to throw you out. And One or the did. other. And yeah. they did. And they did. So listen. So here yeah. we are. So freshman, sophomore year, whatever I was, and I walk into the senior cafeteria, pub school, and everyone stood up. So people are standing up on the little baby benches at the lunchroom, so you can't really see what's going on. But right. I, I see fists flying, and I'm talking like flying For real. everywhere, dude, flying, just boom, 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 boom. It's nuts, it's nuts, it's nuts. And and then and then of course you know the teachers come in, like, right, get the fuck, and they're breaking it up and breaking it up. And this dude is just haymaking somebody, just wow. 
and they grab him by the hair. Like I, I remember just vividly his hair uh, and they snapped his neck back and pulled him off. And it was a chick underneath. Oh, shit. I swear to God on my life. Oh. She was, uh, she was a mechanic. She was a tough girl. She was a. Uh, she lived in a multi. Uh, lived on the was on the softball team. Got it. She was a fight. She was a fighter. You she was tell. a fighter. She got yeah. some cuts in. For she's sure. married to Fortune Feimster. She is now. Yeah. dude, this dude. I mean, but also this fit. This punch. Yeah. You know this the down yeah. the sledgehammer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this dude. All I saw was this and this and that, and I'm thinking, dude, he's demolishing that guy. And then when they took him away, it was a chick, and she popped up. Not that bad. Right. She could fight. She was she was taking it like it wasn't that big of a deal. She was still yelling afterwards. Does it count if you if you get into a fight with a, a, a woman who is a, a clear lesbian, who's an open lesbian? Does it count? D does that still count as you can't hit the woman? Depends who starts the fight. Depends, right? Depends okay. on who starts the fight. What did she say? What, what did he say? Yeah. And also, he and she were getting rid of pronouns. It's just they. So I guess you can fight days. You can fight days. Everybody can fight. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Let's get rid of gen if we're going to get rid of genders. Yeah. Then I guess we can all hit each other. Now. We can all hit each other, <laughs> and and yeah, I can hit. <laughs> can I hit a guy with contacts? I can't hit a guy with glass, but can I hit a guy with contacts? You can hit. You can you can easily hit a guy with contacts. In fact, okay. make him take it out so he can't see you as well. So okay. Yeah, that's what it is. I always think about that. They say you can't hit a guy with glasses. Why? That's not my problem. Because I think I think because the glasses, if they break on the guy's face, I don't know. But well, it's like advantage dude, you disadvantage him. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, the, life's about balance, dude. I don't. Yeah, I've never. I don't think I've ever hit anybody with glasses. I'm trying to. Th I hit somebody with goggles with Rex Specs once. In the My friend Craig, game. yeah, basketball game. <laughs> I punched him right in the face. He had his fucking stupid goggles. <laughs> I mean, that hurt. But also, you punch glasses, that could slice up my hand yeah. wide open. Yeah. Like, what if one of the glass cuts one of the arteries on my arm? There you go. And, and now, I'm dead. And now I'm dead, and, or I fucking slice my arm clean off. Now I'm an amputee. So take off the glasses. That's not my problem. That's what it is. Take That's, off. Take off your glasses. Your glasses. You got to go to the dentist today? Yeah, man. I got to get what my happened? teeth fixed. Honestly, dude, uh, they tell me I got to get my wisdom teeth removed. I still got them. I'm 37. I still got them. I had my, the only reason why I had one of my I have two horrifying dentist stories. One, well, Great. dental Tell stories. Tell me this right before I right go. Right before we go. And then well, I got, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to get them removed today, but I have to go get like the prep yeah. whatever prep surgery she said I have to get. I have to go get something done today. Right. So 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 my wisdom tooth, one of them cracked and the, I didn't know it was I uh, 2016 never forget. I went to Actually, it was 2014. Sorry, so I did forget. Yeah. It was 2014. <laughs> um, um, I bit into a bagel. I was sitting in my apartment in Long Island City, Queens. I bit into a bagel, and my tooth, half of my tooth, came out in the bagel. It came out in the fucking bagel. Dude, the pain that I was in, because it was just an exposed nerve hanging out of the back of my mouth, it was nonstop. I'm talking about 10 out of 10 pain, nonstop for four hours, because I couldn't swallow an Advil. Because I, any type of movement... Like, I, I could, it was too painful. Jesus. So I couldn't swallow an Advil. So finally, I get there to the dentist, and, you know, it gives me the Novocaine, like, you know, packs the tooth. Everything is fine. So, but that's like, I was like, oh, shit, like, you know, like, you know, that's horrible, whatever. Then six months later, eight months later, everything's healed with that. I'm terrified of the dentist, terrified of teeth. I'm like, that was the most triggering experience of all time. I had to get a uh, cavity filled or a root canal, I can't remember. On I've, the, I've had root canals. On the other side. They inject the Novocaine into my gums, which, you know, is supposed to numb your teeth. He's like, oh, can you feel, you know, can you feel this? Can you feel that? And I genuinely couldn't. So I don't know what happened. They go in the back, hit the drill on my tooth somehow. And I, I find out later people can have rare reactions where the Novocaine works. It's supposed to work for an hour or two hours. It works for like five to seven minutes and then wears off. It like resets. I didn't know because he had just done the checks. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. I can't feel it. I hear the drill, and he went like this, like off to the side, just to make sure it was working. I was like, ooh, <laughs> thankfully I can't feel that. <laughs> I don't, you know, he's going in the back, and I felt a little bit on a tooth, and I was like, oh, that must not be the part where it's numb, but I didn't know. Goes in to hit the drill, the Novocaine wore off, drilled right up into my head. The pain was so quick and so immediate, I pass out in the chair, fully pass out. Like that, with the fucking thing going. I've heard that before. Like People that. pass out from the yeah. pain. No, no, because, but, but, but it's, I didn't pass out because it wasn't, it was the Novocaine war. If the Novocaine was there, I wouldn't have felt you the thing. You wouldn't have known, yeah. I wake up, I wake up, you know, I don't know how much later. I wake up. Two, three days. Two, three, yeah. Your pants are off. <laughs> pants, yeah, absolutely, He's dude. Like, we, uh, we, we, uh, 
<laughs> we yeah. did some dentistry work too. Yeah, dude. Friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then fucking, and then and then he goes, oh my god, like you had like some kind of reaction, whatever. It gives me more Novocaine, gives me all the dental work for free because it was like so fucked up. It was sure. like the most rare reaction. But dude, I passed out from the pain. Was it bleeding? Was it gushing with blood too? No, he just basically went. It was just to, a nerve hit. You hit the nerve. He drilled up. He basically drilled into my tooth like I had secrets from the cartel. Like they, they, <laughs> like somebody <laughs> they would do that to you in Mexico. Yeah. You know, like and that's what that's what. <laughs> happened yeah. and fucking it, the pain was so i've never experienced this it's the only time in my life i've ever passed out the pain was so immediate that my brain just said nope no nope. and shut off dude i, I hate that i hate going to the dentist because i'm afraid of because anything i have sensitive teeth anyway but you're a sensitive guy i'm a sensitive little boy i just like i've had different surgeries that don't bother me but something about in my mouth i'm just like oh god it's Can't such a it. thing it's a thing uh, yeah but she's got to get back there but she said i gotta get my wisdom teeth out but i also thought people don't need them out do they I think some people live their whole life. Well, with them. well, what? Well, well, are you Mine having? Are all impacted. Uh, what does that mean? That means they're under the gum line. Are they impacted because of what's going on in society? It's because I, because also I have a tough time shitting sometimes. I think I have constipation in my mouth. Why can't you poo poo sometimes? You're such a healthy, wealthy Today guy. Today I almost sent you a photo. Not, not, no lie. What happened? It was 15 inches, maybe. Like perfect shit. Perfect. And went to the bottom of the bowl. Went to the bottom of the bowl. Perfect. Perfect. But, and it's one of those things where, like, because here's the two things: when you have an S-shaped shit that floats to the bottom, that's a great sign. And when you have minimal wiping, great sign. Oh my god. Did you have god. minimal wiping? Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a few, just a couple. Just a little couple. So was that the first shit you've taken in a while? No, 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 no. I am. I'm getting one out a day. So then you're not constipated. So what do you mean you have trouble pooping? One a day is probably bad. I think it's supposed to be two or no, three. No, one a day is great. No, I think I, it, I, I hear it's two a day at least. I think as long as you're doing one a day, I pee. I got too a much. friend that went after every meal. Dude, I pee. I'm not lying to you. I pee upwards of 20 times a day. You got a bladder infection? No, I always. It's just the way I am. I went to multiple urologists and. It used to be when I was peeing so much and there was like a little bit of pain at the end of the pee. I was like, up oh, STD. But now that the, the, to not have to worry about STDs at all anymore, yeah, like big because time, huh? it's just like it's just I didn't realize how much stress and anxiety I was under every day of my life, constantly <laughs> worrying if I had an STD because <laughs> of the decisions I was making. But just for the last year and a half, to not worry, I mean, at all, at all. about it, because it's it it it's great either way. It's either it's either if I got some pain in my in my PP, I know it can't be me getting an STD, and if I did get an STD, it's because my girl cheated on me, then I can leave. Then you can leave. Mm -hmm. Baby, bye, bye, bye. But where would you take the kids and where would you go? Well, I wouldn't get to take the kids. I would, she would- Why didn't the guy get to take the kids? Let me give one, let me take, you know what I'd say? I'd say, because she's pregnant right now, if we yeah. broke up today, I'd say, you keep Delilah, our five-year-old daughter, I'm taking the one inside you. Give it you to want, me now. Because you want the new one. Give it to me now. Yeah. Give it to me now, take it and out. I'll take it. I saw. I just saw a thing online of a girl that that said she had an eleven and a half pound baby. Yikes! And she had it. What is that? She had it thirty. Wait, I'm stupid. Thirty, like I'm a C-section. I'm trying to do the math. She had it thirty at thirty-four weeks. I think she so said. So it's a little early. It was er, it was early, and it was eleven and a half pounds early. That's what she said. Jesus Christ! So it would have ripped open her. I mean, you, the photos. That's somebody, were, the photos were insane. If that baby was born in like medieval times, that's a that that's a baby that immediately kills the mother. It comes out and it yeah. kills the mother, and it, it becomes king of England. Has she, did she do water birth? My girl. Yeah. Nah. nah. She does. Did she do the natural one? Dude. Like where no no epidural or whatever. Dude. When my daughter was she's she's boss enough to do that. Hell yeah, dude. When my daughter was being born, um, Jazz, the woman next door to like the woman in the room next to us, didn't want to get an epidural. Jazz got the epidural, but she didn't want to get the epidural. And the the woman next. Why are to people us, against it? I'm dumb. I don't just because it's drugs. Because it's drugs, and they think. But the but way I've been taking drugs my whole life. I know. Why that's would what I, I stop said. now? I'm like, we took drugs. That's how she got pregnant in the first place. We were on, on active drugs. I have a friend of mine that had they had their kid on Molly. Dude. That's how they made it. That Make it a fun experience, dude. Yeah, they named her Molly. Good name. No, they named her Ecstasy. Great. Even better name. Even better. I, um, I, I, uh, the woman next door was, was, um, screaming like, like she, like she, like she was about Being to be stabbed. beheaded. Like, yeah. no, like screaming like you can't fucking imagine. And Jazz, you know, she'd already had a kid already. So she was like, this lady is a, a lot. The nurse who was in with our room, like you could just tell, like she was like trying to like, you know, like do the thing she had to do for Jasmine. She was like rolling her eyes every time the other woman screamed. Uh, she was just like, oh, okay, whatever. And then I guess like the nurse was just having a bad day. She walks, I mean, this woman is like giving birth next door. She walks in like while she's like, I think giving birth or screaming. She goes, hey, hey, 
She goes, if you don't want to get the epidural and take modern medicine, then shut the fuck up. You're scaring the other mothers. And I was like, holy shit. Like, word for word. Shut. Even Jasmine was like, that was harsh. Because the pain because the pain has got to be so intense. Because you're like, scaring all the other women then. Yeah. You know? It's like just. And you're putting them in a bad mental space. Yes, yes. You know what the thing that did piss me off, though? Well, again, this is just why, like, women are just, like, superior beings. Like, what they can do. So Jasmine's water broke, right? Her water broke. My daughter wound up being born at, at 10 4 a.m. But but when when Jasmine's water broke, right? That's and then and then your body, once the water breaks, the body, the contractions are basically the woman's uterus and abdomen contracting to push the baby Get out. It that, out. That's all that is. That's Get the Braxton out. Hicks contraction. It's just just basically your body prepping. But then once that water breaks, it's like, no, no, no. Your body, nature is saying, it's time, push. So the water broke. And the nurse texted the doctor because the doctor was upstairs. The nurse had said two hours before, the doctor had said two hours before, hey, text me, text me when her water breaks and I'll come right down and we'll, we'll have this baby. So I'm like, great. Text, text the doctor. Does the emoji, the water emoji? Yeah, just for splash signs. <laughs> Fucking, With his face? Dude, water breaks for an hour and a half. No doctor. Jasmine's just fucking in excruciating pain because you know there's things that the doctor has to do to get the baby out mm -hmm. jasmine doesn't know necessarily what to do when to push how to do this fucking the the nurse texted the wrong number she's had fucking dyslexia or something and reversed the number the doctor comes out she's like what's going on did the water break it and then we're like yes the nurse texted you an hour ago she's like i didn't get a text and then the nurse was like i texted she goes what number do you have and she's like whatever 917-312-6180 and she's like right. no it's zero eight not eight zero no. and dude it's the only time some like, cab driver in new york is like water break what, what? what? Yeah. what happened <laughs> i brought i i i guess because i was like stressed out i'm not like an angry guy I don't. I always am just of the mindset like just let shit's gonna pass. Like there's no reason to get angry or make somebody here in a day. And I just said to the nurse, I was like, that's a fucking huge mistake, lady. It is. That's a huge mistake. It is. That that she was just in here for an hour and a half in yeah. riveting pain. And then the doctor's like, no reason to get upset. It's happy. We're gonna have a baby. We're gonna have like a good baby. And then you know like. So Delilah was brought into the world through anger. Through fucking anger, and that's why she's angry right now. And Honestly, that's why she was throwing shoes at you the other day. That's why she was throwing shoes at me the other day. And we would have had it on my episode of Christy Cast, but my daughter <laughs> pulled the. <laughs> no one will be able to see it because for people that don't know you should go see Chrissy KS go watch a Chrissy KS on the Patreon you'll be able to see that episode but also no not gets, on Patreon on the YouTube oh it's on YouTube oh, it's on the YouTube but it gets cut off because uh, yeah because Delilah was running down the stairs and we were doing a bit where she was going to throw shoes at Papa yeah and she cut the camera yeah so instead, you just get a massive time jump. I think Ma you lost 10 minutes of Massive footage. time. Lost probably the best 10 minutes of the podcast. And, I mean, kids don't care. In Gets right in the car, even though she just ruined my fucking <laughs> podcast work. Makes me go to In-N-Out, get her a milkshake, then fall asleep in the car. It melts all over the backseat of my car. I have to pay $45 for a detailed car wash. She doesn't give a fuck. Honestly? Yeah. Good for her. Good for her, right? Because you know what? You should deal with that. Because you it's did like shit to your parents your whole life. That you, you did dumb shit your whole life. Mm -hmm. We all did dumb shit to our parents. So this is the payback of the universe. That's yep. karma being like, oh, yeah, now the kid's going to fuck up the car. Yeah. You have to go get her a milkshake or she's going to be upset. I learned karma That's when I happens. became a school custodian. The first first day on the job when I was a school custodian, when I was like, you know, in my early 20s. Yeah. The guy was like, uh, he was like, here's, here, here's what this job is. He's like, remember all those times? You put gum under the table, mm. or you thought it was funny to piss or shit in the sink, yeah. or, 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 you know, yeah, or you spit on things you shouldn't have spit on. He's like, well, now you got to clean up the gum. Now you got to clean the sink. He goes, yeah. remember when you, would, you wouldn't flush a toilet, or you'd clog a toilet with all shit and piss in it, yep. and you and your friends thought it was funny? Yep. We have to fix it now. Damn. So he gave me a mop. He gave me some, some a scraper. He said, turn over the desk and start scraping. That was my job for an entire summer. Blistering July New York City heat, no air conditioner. Why would why do they take the gum off? Just leave it there. What's the That's difference? what I said. I said, this is like history. Yeah. Just leave it. Like, they got the whole bubble gum wall in Seattle. But you know, yeah, what's that's like the Locks Bridge in Paris or whatever. It's like this yeah. is a piece of the t a piece of time. That's when Let I it be. I first started doing stand up when I had that job as a custodian. Maybe I was like 23, 24. How long did it last, by the way? A year? I, I did uh, two summers of it. But the second wow. summer I did it, I had already done like my first show and I had tape of it. And the guy, the head custodian guy, got like all the custodians, which was like 15 of them. Like, you know, it was a big school. Some of the teachers who were teaching summer school was like, and because I was so proud, you know, it was like, oh, my first five minutes, you know, five minutes of like early set, yeah. put it on for them. Fucking bomb. <laughs> Dead silence. I had made a joke. I had made a joke about like, like one of my earlier earlier jokes was like you know like um something about you know everybody goes like sex i was like oh you know altar boy like you know give me the lord in my ass like things like that funny I'm yep. there. people I know, walked I like out 
People yeah. walked out. Somebody said, like, this well, is... Didn't you perform it in a church parking lot? Yeah. Well... No, I know. I mean, what can you do? And then fucking, they, you know, I remember, like, completely bombed. And then the guy, the head custodian guy was like, you're not good at this. That's what he said. <laughs> he goes, he goes, you're not you're good not at this. Good at and he goes, a custodian's a good job. You know, it's $21 an hour plus benefits. He was like, you're... That is good for back then. Dude, he's like, you're not good at this. Mm. And I was like, you're right. Did you ever think maybe custodial work was for you? I thought I could be Christian custodians. I heard that I'm not good at this with stand up a lot, especially in the beginning. I remember I auditioned for the comic stri comic strip live comic strip uh, comedy club in New York City, old school iconic comedy club. Used to have a thing. They're not there anymore, right? They were going to close, but now they're they're going to stay open. Oh shit! They made it. They made it through. So they so they had a thing called comic comic strip late nights or whatever, and it was like newer comics or like you know with comics just trying to get into the comic strip, which is such a hard club to get into. But you would perform like late at night, like twelve o'clock, but it was potentially after you know some ever big you know famous headline comedian and so what they would do the auditions and it was the booker you know another comedian and then like the owner and i remember i went up and auditioned and the booker's advice was to me he was like i would Im i would immediately quit he goes you just don't whatever that it factor is that's impossible he said that it factor that's impossible to learn either you're born with it or not born with it he goes you don't have it and i remember he hit the <laughs> t and a piece of spit flew into my eye he just <laughs> it and it just fucking hit and I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude and then I fucking went and I remember I'll never forget <laughs> I went and I took the bus home because the trains weren't working so it's just like not only to be told you suck but then you're on the bus mm. and I'm like a grown man and I'll never forget there was an accident in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel that the bus used to go through and I sat in the tunnel for three and a half hours with oh, no cell phone service miserable. and I had to be at work as a physical therapist at like maybe 7.45 in the morning the next morning. I got home at like 5.15 in the morning because you would do that audition at 12 midnight. Sure. You know? So the whole ordeal, I got home at like 5.15 in the morning and just fucking hated myself. I, 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 I think I, you know, like trauma. Yeah. I pushed out so much of those bad nights, bad sets because I don't, I remember only so many of them, but I know I had so many. I had so many. I only remember so many because... It just was so constant that you have such shitty sets and feel like shit and drive yeah. home sad alone yeah. or take the yeah. train home. Like, I just, it just got so old. There is a point when I was working my day job. Which was what? I worked in the music industry. I was doing touring. Like, what do you mean doing touring? I was, like, helping do, getting visas for people that were going on tour. Dude, really? I did. It was wild. I did Flava Flav, um, Cypress Hill. Uh, we did Erica Badu. We did, like, Dilated Peoples, which I love. Did you ever get to meet them? Some of them, yeah, yeah. they come to the office. Flava Flav came in. What's up, Drew? L.A. or Chicago? Here, L.A. Wow. Uh, Flava Flav came into the office. I'll never forget. And he's like, it, dude, honestly, it was like a six-floor building. And it, mm. it was not that big. And he walked in. We're on, like, the third or fourth floor or whatever. And he's like, yo, Drew, you know, afterwards, he's like, Drew, walk me to my car, man. I don't remember how to get there. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay. So I seriously, I just walked down with him. And he's valeted at the IHOP that was next door. There was an IHOP <laughs> next door. It didn't park in our garage. Flavor Flav, baby. Yeah, Flavor Flav. And, he, and they get his Escalade. He had a big stretch Escalade, you know. And he, he goes, all right, Drew, my fam, my fam, you know, let me know about Japan and all this stuff. Because he had to get visas to go to Japan. And Japan would often not let people... They, what they would do is they would restrict lyrics, right? You had to, they'd flag their lyrics and tell them what they couldn't say. Otherwise, they wouldn't be invited back. Really? Yeah, and if you have a criminal history, they wouldn't let you into some places, right? Interesting. Yeah, like Snoop had a murder charge, right? Even so though he got acquitted. Couldn't go to Japan. Eventually, I think he could. He finally got a grant from the government. But it's like a huge process. It's, wow. It's, yeah, I, I don't, I, this was such an accidental job I fell into. It was like a clerk job I found online, and it turned into right. me like actually doing it. But anyway, Flavor Flav, we go downstairs, and he, he pulls out a wad. I mean, this stick. I'm not kidding. It's not a baseball, like holding right. a baseball in his hand of money. And the valet, little tiny Mexican guy, and he's like, oh, big fan, man, big fan of you. And Flavor's like, oh, word. He's like, let's do a photo, son. And then he's taking a photo, <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm watching the whole thing go down. And he and the valet was five bucks, I think, right. for IHOP. I think it was like five bucks. And he and he's like he's like what I owe you player, and and the kid's like oh it's it's free it's free it's free man I'm a fan I'm a, it's free and and flavor flavor was like oh hold up hold up hold up and he I'm not I couldn't this is sounds fake, it was all hundreds dude he's thumbing through hundred dollar he's like, 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 like licking his finger like and, like, and it gets down to the bottom and it's like a couple of fives and like and then a ones and a bunch of singles and he grabs two singles and he hands them to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, respect, sure, whatever, but also I was like, 
Don't show him the the fucking thirty grand in hundreds you have. Yeah. And then, but he could have just opened it, flipped it over, it took the two out. No, he made him watch him go through all the you money. Think, and you think that was for sure on purpose? No, Flav had no idea what's going on. He's in, he's he, in space. He's la la land. He couldn't right? get to his car. It was six floors. I mean, like, how, what do you mean? How, like, <laughs> no, but it was just insane to think that two bucks. Like, it was just. And also, I didn't expect him to give him a hundred. It was just weird to w- let him watch you go through the money. Right. It's such a like I'm so I'm so weird about money. Yeah. Like if I'm going to tip or whatever, I have to go around the corner and hide. Me too. And then get it ready. Yes. And then I always give hit the tip. That's like Don Rickles. I heard Don Rickles say once like his trick used to be he would give like a, a driver he yeah. would give them like three singles like three singles and like wrapped up but inside the three singles was like $300. I heard about that. But he said he would do that and like he would get calls because like some guys wouldn't check like what a scumbag he was or like people like fuck Don Rickles and he said he would make them laugh like you can't imagine. Right because there's a couple hundred inside like, of there. Yeah like I always got ready when I tip something because I feel nervous about bringing up money in front of people. There's always something so some, weird about yeah. it like when I had the car watch and shit like that. That's a cultural thing though because in, in the United States it's very kind of um, rude to be like oh how much money do you make or whatever. In your up, that's the first they they want to know that they need to know that they're right, like but what do you make but it is weird to know it's strange but we do it differently here because we're we're because we're into material things and we're so capitalistic you know yeah i mean look there western europe is capitalist countries as well but we're so capitalistic in nature that yeah. we show you how much money we have yeah by our houses and our cars and because there there are big houses in europe yeah. parts of europe and all over europe but like most people live a little bit more humbly there. And most people, like, w- if your job is to be uh, a doctor or whatever, it's a standard salary. So, right. like, so there's no, like, like, it's almost like all corporate out there where, like, here, America's like a lot of mom and pop where it's like you could be getting a different wage for the same job. Where there, it's like they would know if you're a level two accountant, you just make a standard salary. Sure. That's what it is. But we see it more. Like right, right the, I, when, whenever I go to like some place like London and shit, I'm like, you can tell what people have a little bit more money. Right. And there is a lot of money in London. Those guys right. that are flashy, but our level of flashy is way higher. You go to Miami, you go to L.A. Oh my God, yeah. You, you see the money is ups- disgusting that some people have. Even yeah. in New York, you see money in New York. By the way, we were watching a show last night that was like a House Hunters New York, and these two, this couple was looking. Their budget was two million bucks for a place in either Harlem, uh, a condo in Chelsea. Or a Browns, uh, no, the Brownstone was in Harlem, McConnell and Chelsea, or in um, millions, or right? Bed Stuy. Yeah. Two million bucks was their budget, like a four bed, three bath, or whatever. And the one in Bed Stuy, I'm yeah. not kidding, was a fucking dump. I'm dump. screaming in bed. Yeah. I'm going, this is a fucking dump, dump. for yeah. $2 million. Yeah. And I mean a dump. So when people say LA is bullshit expensive, New York no, is fucking bullshit. We, we were looking it's bullshit. bullshit. How expensive we it look. Is. We were looking just driving around L.A. yesterday. Me and my family, and we saw a house that was for sale. And we we're like, oh, how much would that house be? And we looked like in New York, we were thinking it was going to be like five million dollars because that's what we're used to, and it was one point seven million. Right. It was a beautiful house, right? And one point seven million is still a lot of money, which is still a fuckload, fuckload of money. Fuckload of money, but you're like, oh, you know, you can actually, aff- you this is still somewhat compared to New York, an affordable city. In New York, you have to see the astronomical price. I mean. I'm sure that place in not only is that a piece of fucking shit, but it's probably not that good of an area. It's yeah. probably still crime ridden at some Sti- point. It's Bedstuy on its way up. It's a part of Bedstuy that yeah. you can tell is like it, they're cleaning up. But it also, it's a building that shares two walls with two other units, and you're like, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. It's not even a fucking stand. Is that the one they got to? Yes, that's the of one. Course. No, 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 no. <laughs> they got the one in. They got the one in Harlem. They got a brownstone in Harlem. But it's just the same still. You right. know, no backyard. You're sharing two walls for two million bucks, two point one million. No, dude, I'd rather not do it. That's why it's like people you're just. You're telling rem- me I gotta pay you two million and still fix stuff? That's crazy. Are taxes high in Los Angeles? Like, is it still 30, 40 grand a year in taxes? Taxes, every- are, uh, taxes are absurd here, but you know, the- we, we hide our money from the government. Yeah. We just don't pay them. God, God. Also, you know, like our uh, the old the old lady, her family has a piece of land that they've had for a long time, and like. Um, I don't even know where it is. It's like Arkansas or something like that or whatever. They're like their grandparents bought land a long time ago. And she's like, oh, they just got the tax deed for the property taxes. There's no house on the land. They just own it. Right. And I was like, oh, what are those taxes like? And she goes, you won't even fucking believe it. $63 for the, for the tax. for the $63, $63 for the year? For the land tax, yeah. So my question to you is this. <laughs> my question to you so is this. So if you build a fucking house on there, that's what you're paying. But, 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 but how do like certain places then... Like, where do they compensate? Like, New York City, like, if you want a nice house on Long Island, it's $40,000 a year in taxes. That's just what it is. 20 to 40. That's crazy. Every year. You can never pay that down. Every year. Maybe you don't have a mortgage, fine. But every year. You're still getting clipped. You're getting clipped, and that's only going up. God. 
So, and then, and then, of course, the New York State income tax. But how do you, like, how does a state like Arkansas, how do they have any money? Yeah, but this is in the Bufu. This is the middle of nowhere, right? Small town shit anyway. Right. And there's no development there. So if you did build a house, you eventually would get taxed on the price of the house. It has to get reassessed. But if you built it by your own hands, you wouldn't, right? Right. If you were a man who could build your own house, you still have to pay for city lines and all that stuff. There's, it would eventually go up. But just to own the land was 63 bucks. If I just owned a plot of land out here and didn't build a house on it, I'd still be paying 10 grand a year on the land. Because just the land just costs money. Yeah, well, because they would assess it with whatever the previous house was that I knocked to the ground. Right. Right, like my owner, my, my, my neighbor across the street, he bought his dad's house from him, and he pays, as long as you keep one wall of the original home, you pay the same taxes as the previous home. He's got a massive house. You've seen a crud across the street from my yeah, house. Yeah. Massive house, but he pays the same taxes that his dad paid on the house in the 50s and the 60s. So it's like minimal. It's nothing. But because you keep a wall, you have to keep something. You have to keep something so, from the original structure, and then you can build around it. So why did you, so did you knock down your, is your house brand new? Or no, you no, your house? We, we, we bought their house. We didn't do nothing to it. So I bought them, and then when it gets reassessed, I pay the taxes on the new price of the house. So I'm getting murked. What they were paying in taxes before at my house was way less. So then where do we have to move where we don't have to do that? Or you just can't fucking get out know. of the Comment way of taxes? Comment below. Where should we fucking move? Where do you want me to move to? Well, I got to tell you, you know where you got to move. It can't be in a place like New York or California. You have to live in a state that's, you know, look, Texas, Texas, Nevada, Tennessee, places where it's either no yeah. state income tax or low because the property, property is still a little bit high right. in some of these places. Right. But it balances out because you're not getting clipped from your income. You know what we should do? You know what I was thinking about doing? Because no, nobody Wisconsin? is doing this. Like, right. nobody's doing this. And I think it's, like, the next place to move to. We should move to Austin. Austin, Texas. No. Austin's in Texas? Austin, Texas. No, I, I haven't heard of one person who's going there. We should okay. do that. That's, like, a city. Because I went there. It's the capital. It's, like, it's on fun. the rise or something? It's on the rise, dude. Austin. It's a cap that's the capital that's of the Texas? That's the capital of Texas, dude. Austin, right. Texas. Yeah, I'll think about it. I don't. I don't know much. I've never heard of it. I mean, I know there is Austin. I know it's there. It's down yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we could. I guess maybe we'll be the first two guys that go down there. Austin, dude, that's the place, man. Trust <laughs> me, I'm gonna go down there, and it's like I'm thinking about even like starting like maybe like you know like a comedy club or something. That seems risky. Yeah. Don't you think? I think. Is there a comedy scene down there at all? I've never been to Austin. It's uh yeah, I mean it's there, you know, it's there. But I've, huh. I'm thinking like with you know. With the success of my Chrissy Chaos podcast, we're getting 30,000 views an episode now. I can bring the whole scene there. All right, perfect. Why don't we move to Bismarck, North Dakota? My teacher used to go there all the time. Capital. Right? Let's go to Bismarck. Why would you go to Bismarck, North Dakota? I, he would go there to get away from people. I think he wanted to go there to hunt and to fish and get away. And North Dakota is not that far from Chicago, right? Is it? Uh, what, is Illinois? It's it's not I far. I would say I would say it's it's. Uh, let's see. Let's Bismarck see. Bismarck is yeah, and then capital of South Dakota is Pierre. How do you know that? I just know the state capitals because I got okay, a little Bismarck, thing called North Dakota, autism. From Bismarck, Chicago to Bismarck. Let's see how far that is. I mean, by let's just see how far it would be by flight or by car. Yeah. By car, it's a drive. It's how long? Like 12 hours. You could do it, pussy. I'll do it. But by flight, that means that's only got to be like a two-hour flight. Yeah, but how many? But North Dakota doesn't have an airport. Sure they Probably do. Probably got to fly into Chicago and drive. They got to. They don't have does an airport. Does Bismarck, North Dakota have an airport? Nope. Guarantee answers and all, but twenty seven thousand dollars. Just said no. Yeah, yeah, it does. So give me twenty seven. Municipal airport is Burlington County, North Dakota. Look at that; they do have a municipal. Burlington Coat Factory, North Dakota. <laughs> good way. That's a good way to end the pod. Yeah. Oh, is Farting it time to end? The, these are such nice chairs, dude. These Ooh, are brand and, new. and it smells. It stinks. It's, it's, stinks. It came from deep in the abdomen. It's it's, and I haven't had a fart like that in a long time, and uh, it's concerning. No, the only reason that, we, that we're that we wrapping up is because uh, we got to get you in an audition. I got to get myself a dentist appointment. Yeah. We've got to cruise along. We got to cruise along. We got to cruise along. All right, so one Love word you. or one phrase. You know how we end. This might be the last time Chrissy D is on the Whiskey Ginge no, for but a I while. Don't, I don't want it to be Well, the then maybe we should keep doing them. I don't even know. At what? this point, I think we're having so much fun. That if we do do one more, we didn't get the drink because it's too early in the day, but the next one we should just get tanked and do it. You want to get tanked? I think we should just get wrecked out of our head and do it. You want to do that? Yeah. I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to do that. that. By the way, I talked to Mark Norman on the phone the other day. What did day. he say? Well, because you know we're trying to do that, that arena tour thing. I know. I know we're gonna be Who got to. added? Sal? Sal Volcano, you maybe. Mo- They're all, everyone's a maybe. They don't know if they, everybody, no one knows who can do it. Oh, so it's still actually not confirmed. Not really. Everything's kind of up in the air because you couldn't do it. And I think Glazer dropped out. And then Sodi, I don't think, could do it. I, I think it all got over the place. But I called Mark yesterday to see if he was in. He's in, but 
I don't think it's locked. You know, he, we're all, those of us that are in are in, but I called him and I said, are you doing it? He said, hey, comedy. Hey. hey. He, he goes, hey, you know, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm Kevin Hart. I'm gay. I'm gay, Kevin Hart. How good of an impression does that be? No, right? no, you, you got the talk, best impression. You talk to me and I'll be Mark. Ready? Go ahead. Hey, um, hey, hey Mark, uh, what do you, should I get management? Yeah, I don't know. What are you going to, you know, these guys are all robbing you, the Jews. What are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> what did what did, what did you think? What about is your podcast? How's the podcast going with Joe List? Pretty good. Joe's pretty good. Unless he's having a bad day, got a breakout or something like that, then we can't do anything. Can't tape comedy. <laughs> <laughs> what what's your favorite city to perform in? Ah, I like them all. They're all good. Doesn't really matter. Not really a big fan of one more than the other. Come out and see me. Go to marknorman.com, get the tickets. Watch my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> How close is that? That's fucking perfect. I think dude. I want to do him if we tour together. If we get on the tour together, I want to do a. I want to do my set as him one night. Dude, do it. Just get stoned to dude, shit just and do Mark fucking Norman. do it. Hey, I'm Kevin Hart. Comedy. Hey, I'm Kevin. Uh, I wonder if Kevin Hart could eventually sue him for that. Uh, and you know what? He would. <laughs> he would. Right? Yeah, he would. Yeah. yeah. I love Norman. I think he's one of the best joke writers we got right now. Yeah, he had a good tweet the other day. I saw him. He tweeted Genuinely, something. Genuinely, he's a killer. He said. He said. Uh, he said. He said. He said. Just saw a guy giving himself the vaccine under a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh hard. He also had one. Hold on. He had yeah. one. He had one today that got me really good too. This morning. Yeah, I was just, great. I was just Marky. In, Marky Norman. Shout out to Mark Norman. Hey. What are hey, you coming? What are you gonna do? And he's got a special out to lunch, which is I'm, crushing I'm on YouTube. It's special. He on goes, YouTube. And, er, and er, I'll read it in his voice. An erection is basically an energy bar for a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Mark Norman. All right, end the episode the right way. I love you. Maybe we will. You know what? You guys vote down below if you guys want us to continue this because we could just keep it rolling. Yeah. Chris, he's here for another month. Let's do it. All right, you one word Let's or one it. phrase. What Go is ahead. it? One word or one phrase? Right the camera, just write it. To, um, um, I, I know. I, I always forget. I always forget to do it. I always forget to. Uh, uh, bring back Alex Jones. In here. We pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy, 